Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's 5.30, and I know all of you are either busy or you've had a busy day and you're ready to, to get back home and have time with your families. So uh, we're going to try to make this quick and to the point, but we had um, some great news this week for Clay County Schools and for the citizens and taxpayers of Clay County and especially for our students. And uh, we wanted to make sure we took the opportunity to put that information out there in a way that everyone could access it to the best of our ability. So. Uh, we decided to have this little press conference today. Uh, we're also streaming this on our YouTube channel um, so that uh, there will be a recording of it later in case anyone wants to send it or anybody or, or, or watch it later. Um, my name's Dale Cole. I'm superintendent of Clay County Schools. Uh, thanks for coming and taking the time. Uh, I did want to recognize that uh, Senator Kevin Corbin and Representative Carr Gillespie were going to try to be with us today. Obviously, it's election season. And they have a lot of places to visit almost every day. They told me they were going to try their best, but um, they had an appointment in, in Lake Junaluska today as well that was going to put pressure on them for time. I know they would have been here if they could have um, because they were certainly very supportive uh, to me throughout this process and really since I've uh, been hired as superintendent in Clay County. So I always appreciate them and the support they give us. Um, I want to recognize the Board of Education members that are here today. They're all here, Mr. Danny Jones, uh, Ms. Reba Beck, uh, Vice Chair, Mr. Robert Caldwell, uh, Chair, Dr. Jason Shook, and Ms. Kelly Crawford. Um, I'm always appreciative of their support as well. Uh, we have our Board of Commissioners here uh, as well. We have uh, Chairman, Mr. Rob Peck. Uh, we have Scott Penlin, Dwight Penlin, Randy Nichols, and Mr. Clay Logan. And they're back here at the back of the room. I know that uh, the public can't see that at home. You can only see Mr. Jones, who's sitting in his normal chair. But I assure you that they are all here. Um, uh, I did also want to thank uh, Miss uh, Debbie Monty, who's the town manager for Clay. I'm sorry, the, the county manager for Clay County. She is not here today, uh, but she's also a big part of any work that I do with the board um, for our school systems when it comes to facilities and maintenance. Uh, she's a wonder at finding grant monies uh, that we can use uh, to, to build and maintain uh, all of the, the public access that we have available to us in Clay County for our citizens. Um, I also wanted to recognize our maintenance director, Mr. Steve Livers, uh, his assistant, Larissa O'Dell, Ms. Shelley Hollingsworth, our director of finance, um, as well as our, our principals are all here with us today and our assistant principals. Something like this, is it starts out as a team effort. And it will be a team effort over the next three to four years as well in order to make it happen. It is a tremendous amount of work. So uh, moving on, just to give you a little bit of background, um, on December 16th of 2021, every school district in the state received notification from the Department of Public Instruction that the rules had changed for needs-based lottery grants. And that's the same kind of grant we use to build Hazelville Primary School. Um, at the time, uh, Clay County Schools was not eligible for further grants for uh, at least five years. Uh, and there were a lot of other restrictions as well because we had built Hazelville Primary School. Um, so the changes included, uh, there were new maximum grants amounts. So we could get $30 million for building elementary schools, up to $40 million for building middle schools, and up to $50 million for building high schools. The grant funds uh, used to be they could only be used for new buildings. Uh, now it was expanded to include additions, repairs, and renovations of existing buildings. Uh, now the local matching requirements would range from 0% to 35% based on property tax data. In Clay County, based on our property tax data, we qualified uh, for a needs-based grant with no local match. Okay, so I want to make that clear. That's a big difference. We do not have to pay any kind of local match if we received one of these grants. Um, the uh, new eligibility criteria uh, on the property tax data meant that now 95 counties uh, were now eligible for these needs-based grants. Um, it eliminated the five-year period of ineligibility um, like we had when we built Hazelville Primary School, and it eliminated the five-year restriction for prior recipients to reapply for a needs-based grant. Uh, these changes were made possible by fiscal policies implemented by our state government in North Carolina. Um, uh, and of course, Senator Corbin and Representative Gillespie are our representatives uh, in that government. Uh, 
Their work resulted in a surplus of more than $9 million uh, in, in this year's state budget uh, as a total. So that's $9 million that could be spent on a lot of things that we desperately needed across the state. As a result of these changes, Clay County Schools became an eligible district. And after a conversation with our Board of Education members, uh, our county commissioners, and our county manager, um, I received blessings from all of those groups to pursue this grant and just go after a big idea that we had discussed a couple of years ago. Uh, we worked extremely hard as a team to craft a competitive grant application for $40 million to build a new school that would provide the following. Uh, all new classrooms for grades three through eight, a new middle school gym, a new cafeteria that would serve all grade levels on the main campus, so grades three through 12, and a new performing arts center that would serve grades kindergarten through 12, as well as be available for our entire community to use uh, for different events and, and community purposes. Essentially, if we, if we built this building, it would consolidate 11 very old buildings under one roof that would save future maintenance costs for our taxpayers, provide a much safer learning environment for our students because they wouldn't have to be walking outside so much uh, to go to different classrooms. They would all be in one building. And it would help us to better recruit and retain families and teachers to Clay County Schools because we have to compete for those folks every single day. Um, so that's extremely important that we provide the best possible working environment that we can. I'd like to say that CCS was not alone in this pursuit, as you might imagine. Uh, 70 of those 95 counties submitted grant requests that totaled $2.7 billion. Um, there was only 350, or I'm sorry, 395 million made available by the General Assembly this year. So $2.7 billion worth of grants were submitted for only 395 million, million available dollars. Um, but today it is our pleasure to announce that CCS has been awarded $32 million in state funds to make this vision for a new school a reality. We want to thank our public servants and our community for their support as we move forward towards making this building a reality uh, over the next three to four years. Um, I, I do have to point out that this uh, grant of $32 million, which we greatly appreciate, it is $8 million short of what uh, our design plans put out there that we would need for a three through eight school that was our big vision. Um, so certainly uh, we're going to have to go through a design process anyway. Um, I have no doubt that as always our Board of Education and our Board of Commissioners are going to work together uh, to work out uh, through that design process uh, and that's going to include size and scope and a lot of other things about the project including just total cost of uh, what we can afford and make a reality for our students and our teachers. Um, but that is work to come. Today is about celebrating the fact that we get to start off with 32 million, which is a huge deal for a community our size. And when we make this happen, uh, our school district facility-wise will be set for the next 30 years. And I'm hugely excited about that, and I hope everyone at home and everyone in this room is as well. Um, I provided a handout to everyone. Uh, a, this press release will also go out on Facebook um, this afternoon. Uh, but I just wanted to flip through a few slides here. So this is uh, what we put together, part of what we put together for the state. It numbers the 11 uh, exterior buildings that would be placed under one roof with this one school if, we're, if we were able to get this entire project done. Uh, so in that, those of you familiar with it, you can see uh, on the far right top corner, one and two, those are two of our trailers that have been there for over 15 years um, that are kind of coming apart. Uh, the third building is our elementary school. Fourth and fifth are the two pods that were built in the early 70s. Uh, six and seven are the next two trailers that were bought at the same time. Uh, number eight is the cafeteria that serves the entire main campus uh, that was also built, I think, uh, 1966 is when our cafeteria was built. Uh, number nine is the middle school gym. Uh, the middle school gym was built in 1957. Uh, and number 10 is the auditorium. 
Uh, we don't even have a record of when the auditorium was built, but it was a long time ago. Uh, and number 11 is, of course, the middle school. And the middle school uh, additions were made, and the building was remodeled in September of 1990. However, the middle school building was actually the, the high school in the past. So it's been there a lot longer than 1990. And the thing, as, as on the maintenance side of things, what we worry about is water pipes in the walls that when they start breaking down, those are the kind of maintenance costs that we're going to be facing in the very near future that we want to avoid. So all of those buildings will be placed in one. Um, and this is what that would look like. Now, I, I will say that this is just one architect's idea of what it could look like. Uh, last year, um, we had a little money left over from our capital outlay funds that the commissioners allocated to us. Um, and I was looking at all of our buildings and, and I just kind of had the thought of if we could do exactly what we needed and wanted to do um, with a new school, what do we project it would cost and would it fit in the property that we have right here behind the vocational building and between the middle school and the elementary school? Because I, I wasn't sure if it would fit. Um, so I contacted the architect that we hired that designed Hayesville Primary School and just asked him how much they would charge to just listen to my uh, idea, get the data of how many classrooms and that sort of thing, and how much would he charge me to put together a, a design and measure it out and tell me whether or not it would fit. And he told me he would charge me $10,000 to do that, which was great because we had $10,600 left. So we just decided to preemptively go ahead and, and figure that out and find out if it was possible. And this is what he came up with. Um, so you can see our central office building. It's basically a U-shaped building like the primary school, and the opening of the U sort of faces towards the build center. Um, one wing would be grades three through five and two stories. The other wing would be grades six through eight and two stories. Um, you would have the, the building at the bottom of the U or the area at the bottom of the U facing towards where the middle school is now. Those are your office spaces. And then the bottom of the U going right along the back end of the central office, that's where you would have uh, your cafeteria, your gym, and your performing arts center would all be there. So that's an idea. Of course, part of this process is putting the information out there and taking uh, bids on other designs from other architects because there may be better ideas out there. But this just told me that it was possible to do it. Uh, this is just some additional information on projected costs. Again, this was last May that um, Boomerang Designs put this together for us. They projected at the time that uh, it would cost $40,173,000 if we started building it that day last May in 2021. I also asked them to just project out what it would cost if we build it five years from now because, of course, everything gets more expensive over time. Um, the projected cost at that point was 43100000 So I just put that out there. That's the reason why I asked for, more, for $40 million. Um, that and the fact that it was the max we could get for building a middle school. And I wanted to see what we could get. Um, I think it's the last slide. So um, I just wanted to share that information with you. Uh, certainly, uh, we're going to have to make some adjustments and, and work as a team to figure out what we can do. But again, I want to reiterate, I, I don't think uh, I, I foresee no issues with our Board of Commissioners and our Board of Education working together to do that as they always have. So um, at this time, I, just in the room, does anyone have any questions or would someone like to speak? Right here, Dr. Petty, <laughs> for the people at home. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm dressed for baseball, by the way. So that's where I'm headed. That's where I came from. But I just want to say uh, how blessed Clay County is. We're truly blessed uh, for this great opportunity for all those who worked on this at the state level uh, to make this a possibility for all of our local elected officials, for our school board, our county commissioners. Debbie Monty, as Superintendent Cole mentioned, does a lot of work for us and, and really is great at finding opportunities. So. And I know that that's just the tip of the iceberg because staff is very, very important. When we go after grant money on the county level, 
it, it may be ideas that we generate, but at the end of the day, it's other people doing the work. And so they really deserve the credit. So all of you folks who worked on this at the school level, we certainly appreciate it, and we're excited. And, and as you said, the, the, that's the fun part. That's the that's great right. news. Now the work gets started. Now so uh, we'll have to sit down and, as I said, go through the design phase and figure out how we make this all work on a budget side of things. But uh, we're very excited, very blessed, and very, very fortunate. And, again, I just appreciate all of you. And with that being said, I hate to do it. You got I, got a, I got a ball game to coach. Yes, sir. And so yes, sir. I'm yes, going to step out. But, again, appreciate everybody. Thank you. Dr. Sure. would you like that? I should have got up here before Rob did because he kind of takes takes the word for everything. So, uh, but I just want to start by saying how how thankful I am for everybody that put in time and effort to uh, get the grant going. Uh, for Mr. Cole to to think far enough ahead to go ahead and start having some plans, um, even though it's a it's a broad scale plan, but to look at an idea uh, that could set us ahead years down the road. You know, like he said, 15 or 20 years down the road if we can get a new building and get something put together. So um, I just am very thankful and I appreciate everybody who put time and effort into putting putting the grant together and, and getting this money. It's uh, to get $32 million dropped in your lap, that doesn't happen very often. And it's a it's a huge start to uh, to something that could be really good for Clay County. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schiff. And I guess if no one has any further questions or anything, we'll wrap it up online.